Hello and welcome to In Medias Res. I'm Jake and this week we're going to talk about everything everywhere all at once. I had originally planned to talk about this at a later date, but fresh off of their 11 nominations um, for the Academy Awards, I thought, hey, let's go ahead and talk about it now. Um, first, I want to delve into the fact that um, congratulations to the cast um, for all of their nominations, including all of the filmmakers and crew as well. But Michelle Yeo is actually the first um, Asian woman to be nominated since 1930s, I think. And the woman who was nominated then actually passed, um, pretended to be white. That way she could basically work. So there's obviously a big conversation about representation in Hollywood and, you know, the whole controversy of Oscars so white. But that aside, I want to congratulate Michelle Yeoh, Kei Hui Wan, and Stephanie Hsu for their nominations because it was very much deserved. So just a little snippet about the movie um, and its general synopsis. It is about... Um, Evelyn and Waymond who are being audited by the IRS and also preparing for a Lunar New Year party and during this time they end up in essentially a multiversal war um, against a character who I struggle to pronounce Jobu Tupaki um, and chaos ensues um, this is kind of a broad strokes <laughs> general synopsis um, but Anyways, um, let me give my general thoughts on it. Um, first of all, I think it was an absolute work of art from start to finish. The script, the cinematography, the editing, the directing, the acting, the costuming, set design, like everything. I have not seen a movie in a while that I just kind of was so astounded by. Like I was literally blown away all up in my feelings after watching it and I mean, like, even now, I still kind of, like, I'm reeling from it. It's such a phenomenal movie from start to finish in every way, and it deserved all 11 of its nominations. Actually, quite frankly, it should have swept in every category. <laughs> or I hope it sweeps in every category. Um, so there are two kind of broad themes in this movie um the one that seems to come up most prominently um in kind of criticisms in media and people talking about it is the i think the obvious theme which is generational trauma um so we have generational trauma as a theme that's kind of popped up a lot over the last few years um i don't know if it's just because people are going to therapy more or really confronting kind of the effect that the previous lives of our parents and our grandparents and how they have kind of pushed that trauma onto us and their children and so on and so forth. I'm not really sure why it seems to be happening so prominently, but movies like this and Kanto are ones where it's very much at the forefront and I see it come up a lot in conversation in the film and TV world the last few years. In this case, um, it is prominent because we have Evelyn who decides at a young age to move to America with Wayman and her father essentially abandons her. Um, they don't really have a relationship until kind of not too long before the movie takes place when he gets sick and she's now taking care of him. And so she has struggled with kind of that her entire life and how maybe she regretted the decision of moving, moving to the United States with Wayman and Maybe she was, should have listened to her father and, you know, stayed in Asia. But she turns around and does kind of the same thing to Joy. She, um, you know, she doesn't necessarily approve of Joy's lifestyle. And I don't necessarily mean her sexuality, but, you know, she says she's fat. She's got tattoos. She's doing these things that necessarily, like, Evelyn, Evelyn doesn't approve of. And she is not wanting to tell her father that... Evelyn is a lesbian and actually I don't know if she's a lesbian we're just gonna call her queer because I don't risk never explicitly stated I don't think but um, you know she doesn't want to say that Joy is queer to her father because um, she claims he's from another generation he's this he's that the same kind of 
things that we kind of hear frequently about why um, the older generation, it's kind of almost accepted for them to be prejudiced and bigoted and racist. Um, and so that's a theme and a trend that is seen kind of throughout the entire movie from start to finish. Um, I think it's kind of the obvious one. Um, it's the one that I think a lot of people can connect to on a very um, real level um, in a way that people are aware of. Um, but that kind of leads me to what I think is the real theme of the story and also in my opinion connects to the title of Everything Everywhere All at Once and that is the themes and trend of nihilism. So if you don't know what nihilism is, it is the belief that there is no meaning, the, um, that life has no meaning, that existence has no meaning, there is no meaning to the universe um, on like a grander scale. It just is. Um, so nihilism um, propped up very predominantly after the Enlightenment, um, mostly because it was during that time that the world really shifted to seemingly shifted to more of science-based and less faith-based. That's not to say that science hasn't always existed. Obviously, there's always been varying um, conversations about science and its prominence throughout history. But this seems to be a time in history when it obviously becomes very prominent. People started to kind of abandon religion in um, instead focusing more on what is tangible, what they know, what the, you know, it's kind of factual information about the world and less about the belief system of a higher power. And so what this did is actually led to an increase in nihilism because without that belief system, people started to question what was the purpose of life. Um, and it led people to believe that it was, there was none. Um, and a lot of great philosophers delved into it, um, partially because some of them were very like Christian and very, had very much a, <laughs> religion was very prominent in their lives. One of the most prominent philosophers that talked about it was Nietzsche, and this is kind of what he said about it. He said, what I relate is the history of the next two centuries. I describe what is coming, what can no longer come differently, the advent of nihilism. For some time now, our whole European culture has been moving as toward a catastrophe with a tortured tension that is growing from decade to decade, violently, headlong, like a river that wants to reach the end. Nietzsche believed that nihilism would be the downfall of society. It would cause society to collapse. And other philosophers agreed. Um, one, Donald Crosby, said that once set in motion, the process of questioning could come to but one end, the erosion of conviction and certitude and collapse into despairs. And he believed that if you even take that nihilism and start to question morality and quote unquote objective belief, then that could prove deadly. And the reason they partially believe that is because when you start to believe that there is no meaning, there is no point, or, you know, it kind of causes a level of detachment. You start to pull away um, and it kind of can re lead to like rugged individualism and this kind of what some people believe is true freedom or liberty. But, and it was, it comes from a lack of belief that there is something more to life, to connection, to existence. And they even believed that that is the reason something like the Holocaust came to be. Because if you believe there is no greater meaning to life, then why not commit some such atrocities? Because in the end, it won't matter. Um, obviously, not everyone believed such things, but there was this rise of nihilism after the Enlightenment. And now I'll talk about why I think that is something that is the real main theme of everything, everywhere, all at once. So in one of the world's universes, in one of the universes, Evelyn experiments on joy to the point where her mind essentially fractures um, into the multiverse and essentially causing her to basically experience all of herself all at once. Um, and I would argue that that moment where she fractured and connected to basically the multiverse is kind of her moment of enlightenment. Um, some could even call it omnipotence. 
you know, and she talks about connecting to it all and then having the realization that there, that it's all just a series of atoms and molecules rearranged differently. And that's the reason she can manipulate the world in such a way to alter it to her will, to her whim. Um, and it was there in that time frame that she reached this enlightenment that she discovered, in her opinion, that there is no greater purpose. That's it. There's no meaning. She's seen the multiverse. She's seen everything. She understands the world on a molecular level and has deemed there is no purpose, no reason beyond just this. And that leads us to the everything bagel. And the everything bagel is literally a black hole. Um, physically, literally, it's a black hole with a giant hole because a bagel, circular with a hole. Um, but it's literally sucking everything up into nothingness. And no matter what happens, it can't be filled. There is no purpose, no meaning, no nothing. It's, it's, it's a giant suck. You know, and I think that kind of circle and the hole in the bagel kind of mirrors that feeling of nihilism where there is no point and nothing that you do can fill that hole. It's just misery, dread, and despair. So, Joy goes in search of Evelyn, the woman who traumatized her, who broke her, who created her. Because it's a cry for help. She doesn't think that there's a point to anything. So she reaches out to her mother in these million different ways to ask her, show me something. Give me a reason. Give me a reason to believe that there is a purpose to this. She reaches out to her. And finally, she finds the Evelyn that we see in the movie who starts to be pushed to the kind of the same capabilities as her. You know, her mind starts to become fractured so she can experience the multiverse all at once as well. And so they both look into the everything bagel together. And in that moment, the same thing happens to Evelyn. She looks into this, the great emptiness of the universe and decides as well, there is no point. There is no meaning to it. It's just despair, emptiness, and nothingness. No point. And it's kind of in this moment that Joy kind of realized that she could not seek solace in her mother. This was her way of reaching out to the person who kind of did the most damage to her, the most harm to her, made her and says, please just give me something. Give me a reason. Show me that there is something to this, something else that I'm not seeing. And Evelyn couldn't. And I believe that's partially because she too had experienced the same thing. She had been abandoned by her own father. She wasn't necessarily happy with the life that she had lived. And she saw all of these wondrous lives that she didn't get to experience. But quite frankly, every time she did it, she kept wanting to stick there, the one where she was a famous kung fu artist, the, she wanted to latch on to that one. And, but in the end, she decided that it was the same thing. There was no point, there was no meaning, just nihilism. And I think in that moment is the moment Joy decides that suicide is the only way to end it all. Because if there is no point, then why keep going? Why keep on living? Um, because that was her cry for help, to say, give me a reason. Show me something that I can't see, because all I see is nothingness. And it didn't happen. We come to that moment where, for a lot of people, I think that is kind of why, they, why nihilism is such a dangerous and slippery slope, is because of what it can lead to. Because they question, well, what's the point of living? But in the end, Evelyn is to the point where she's ready to quit as well. She's ready to give up 
and just let joy go. And then she kind of experiences something throughout the multiverse. And she looks to Waymond, her husband, and Joy's father. And she kind of relives basically his entire existence through all these universes. And, and that's when she finally sees it. Like, that's the reason. That's the purpose. So Wayman's character is like the epitome of kindness and connection and compassion and just like so full of life. You see him move to the United States and how excited he was to open the laundromat and to have this family with Evelyn and Joy. Like he seems to truly generally embrace every single aspect of life and he does it with kindness and compassion and love, which is quite frankly the antithesis to nihilism. You know, I would argue that nihilism is detachment from life, um, whereas kindness and compassion is connection. And so she realized in that kind of moment that that was the point. That was the reason. That was the thing that Joy was looking for, was just c connection, kindness, and compassion. And so, like, even if you believed that there was no greater, higher power, purpose or higher power, you still had something to hold on to. You still had something in that moment to give it meaning. And that was the people in your life. And I think that that kind of really becomes the second meaning to everything, everywhere, all at once. You know, the first is kind of the literal, they're experiencing all of that and that leads them into nihilism. Um, but like I said, I believe nihilism is a level of detachment. But the second is connection to everything, everywhere, all at once, which is kind of, like I said, the antithesis to nihilism. Because if you have that connection, it kind of has a meaning. It has a purpose. It may not necessarily be a purpose handed to you by a higher power, but there still is a purpose to go on forward. And so we come to the end and then we kind of have that full circle moment with the generational trauma get to the end she's like i'm going to let you go and then she has a realization with about wayman and then she says no that's not going to happen yes i think you're getting fat yes i don't like the tattoos i may not like all of the things about you but i'm not letting you go and Joy says, so you're just going to ignore it. Yeah, pretty much. That's what's going to happen. I'm going to ignore it because I want you in my life. I want you to be here with me and Waymond and your grandfather. Because at the end, that's what matters. That's the point. That's the purpose for us to come together to love one another. And I think in the end, that's what joy truly wanted i mean sure people who feel like they're an other always want to be truly accepted for who they are she wants her mother to say you know don't judge her for being fat don't judge the tattoos don't judge for how she dresses but we can't always ask that because that's you know you can't change who evelyn's going to be maybe over time it can change but in that moment you can't but all you can ask for is just to accept me love me and be here no matter what because family is supposed to have unconditional love. So you kind of have the marrying of these two themes of nihilism and generational trauma. Um, I've seen a lot of conversation about acceptance and generational trauma, and that's what Joy wanted, but I haven't seen a lot about the nihilism and the kind of the despair and the feeling of nothingness, um, as well as the conversations about suicide. Uh, personally, when I was watching the moment, um, when they're in front of the Everything Bagel and she's standing there and she's just like, you know, just let me go so I can be done with it. I mean, like I had a moment, I kind of freaked out because I was like, no, that's her committing suicide and I haven't seen people talk about it. And maybe I'll kind of delve into that one um, in another episode. I'm not sure yet. It's kind of a really... Um, sensitive topic for myself and a lot of others um maybe we should talk about it more and i think there's more at the end i think there's more that we could delve into with this 
you know, movie and talk about nihilism and how many believe it could be the downfall of society. Because, um, I mean, even in this, the concept of nihilism is clearly believed to potentially lead to the end of all existence. But in the end, kindness and compassion is what saved the day. And I think that's something that we can take kind of into reality and can learn from this. Because like I've said before, art is a way for us to connect, to um, understand, and to heal. And I think that taking the theme from this and seeing that kindness and compassion and connecting to one another really can save the day. Um, I would like to hear what you all think. Um, you know, did you kind of see nihilism as a theme? Um, is it, do you agree? Do you disagree? I would like to, you know, kind of let's talk about more in the comments or, you know, message and talk about this. Um, it, maybe there's some other themes in the movie that you saw that I didn't see. Um, maybe you thought the generational trauma kind of stood at the forefront more than the nihilism. Um, but, you know, either way, like comment below. Let me know what you thought about this movie. Um, and its themes as well again congratulations to all of the cast and crew who were nominated it was very well deserved um, I very much look forward to seeing if they win um, and as always don't forget to subscribe tell your friends um, tell them to come join us in this very deep conversations <laughs> about philosophy and um, all the things surrounding media and TV and film so I'll see you all next time. Bye.